This is the grade three math practice test for T and Ready. On this version of the test, this is question number 21. Mark has 40 cards. He stacks the cards in eight piles. Each pile has the same number of cards. Which two equations can be used to find C, the number of cards in each pile? Now, the weird thing about this question is you really don't have to know a whole bunch about the processes to get the answer correct. In fact, knowing the process actually makes it more difficult for you to guess, if you don't already know, the answer to the question just based off the information that's given. The question has two parts to it. Number one, there's the balance of, well, what about the relationship between multiplication and division? Multiplication is, of course, a lot of, ma a lot of adding, as I used to say. So instead of having, say I have four groups of five, it gives me 20, right? Or 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5. Now, this one is slightly more efficient, of course, right? But the reality is, if one of those numbers was 220, it would be way more efficient because you don't want to do this 220 times. That would be exhausting. So that's definitely not something that you want to do. So if you have multiplication, it's really just a lot of addition. Now, Division is the opposite of it. With multiplication, we have, I have this many groups of this amount, and I make this total. Division is the opposite of that. It's You start with a total, and I want to break it into this many groups. How do I get there? What number needs to go in each pile? So this is clearly, on its face, a division question. I have 40 cards. I'm going to make Four or eight piles. Fifteen, sixteen, twenty four, thirty two, thirty three, thirty four, thirty five, thirty nine, forty. So as you can see, each pile has five in it each. So you would think, okay, how do I get to the answer? That I want to know which two equations can be used to find C which is the number of cards in the pile. Well, the number 5 is the value of C. So I have to look, essentially, at the answer choices and say which one of these can get me to 5 without already having to know what 5 is. So the first one that I'm going to choose is the basic division. I've visually recreated 40 divided into 8 groups, so this is definitely 1. So this gives me a C value of Five. You'll notice that this one says 40 divided by 5 gives you C. Well, you may think, well, 8 times 5 is 40, and that gets you there, right? But the value of C is not 8, it's 5, so this won't help you. Same thing here, 8 times 5 is C. Well, we know 8 times 5 is 40, but that's a true statement, but it doesn't answer the question. It's applying the variable to the wrong term. You want to find a situation where C's value is 5, and it makes a true statement. So for this one, 5 times C is equal to 40. Well, if C was 8, this would be perfect. Unfortunately, C is not 8, it's 5, so that's out, which leaves us with our value of A. So again, you have to answer the question they ask you. Even if you know the work in your head, you knew it was 8 times 5 is 40, or you knew 40 divided by 8 was 5, that's all well and good. But you needed to have something in place to remind you, like I did here, that C's value needs to be 5 when I substitute in those values here. If I apply the wrong value to C, then I pick the wrong answer. It's as simple as that. Now, as we get to this, you'll want to make sure that you write the letter next to your problem. Well, you don't have to, but that's what I would do. Because when I transfer over to the answer sheet, I don't want to make some little mistake in having to go through all this hard work and then miss it because I bubble in the wrong thing. But if I have the letters here, it makes it easier for me to follow along and bubble in correctly. I don't get lost when I go back and do that. You know, get a plan for that. Uh, that way you don't make that little mistake that costs you a bunch of points for no good reason.